The crater-shaped island of Ureparapara is a beautiful, remote place. It and many of the neighboring islands in Vanuatu's Toba province are only accessible by boat, and life here takes on a different pace, even in the province capital Sola, located on the island of Vanua Lava. But while far removed from the heavy commercial industry, sky-rise buildings and traffic of the main urban centers, the geographical and socio-economic landscape of these quiet and distant shores remain vulnerable to the impacts of climate change and natural disasters. The Secretariat of the Pacific Community SPC, in partnership with the United States Agency for International Development, USAID, and the government of Vanuatu, is working to strengthen the food security and resilience of its people through a regional project which is currently being implemented in six Pacific Island nations. In Vanuatu, the project works in close collaboration with the National Advisory Board for Climate Change and Disaster Risk Reduction, better known as NAB. NAB's role is to coordinate as well as monitor and evaluate all climate change and disaster risk initiatives being implemented on the ground. The climate change debate remains focused on the global and regional agenda. However, adaptation must start from people's actions. Here in Vanuatu, all project initiatives related to climate change and disaster risk management are coordinated and monitored by the National Advisory Board on Climate Change and Disaster Risk Management. Working with the National Advisory Board, the SPC USAID project has focused on Torba province, in particular Sola on Vanua Lava and Divers Bay on Ureparapara Island. This project, I know it's produced some really um, important information, especially um, in terms of uh, vulnerability assessments. Um, that's uh, still quite a grey area for us in Vanuatu. We need to develop that further. But I guess this project has set the basis to be able to go further with that work. In our new uh, agriculture sector policy, we have identified uh, uh, food security as a very important uh, issue. All our efforts through the participation of, stake, of all stakeholders uh, will need to um, be driven to uh, improve or enhance uh, uh, food security of communities. The government of Vanuatu, through the Ministry of Agriculture we worked with uh, SPC uh, and we, we draw from the initial uh, uh, results that were taken in from experience of other projects and Torba province uh, appeared top on the list as the most vulnerable. Uh, it was basically due to its remoteness. Uh, it was far up north uh, with uh, very minimal access to basic services uh, like health, education, shipping and other services. Eh? Diverse Bay is, uh, is, uh, is situated within the Bay of uh, Urebarabara Island and the population of Tiber Bay is around 266 people and about 64 households or so when we started the project. They rely a lot on subsistence agriculture. The challenge they face is really the, the quality of their agricultural lands. There's also low consumption of fish because they, they, the, the island, they have very, very, very limited fishing ground. Eh? So their food security situation is already uh, vulnerable. Eh? They're also facing a lot of uh, production constraints such as declining soil fertility, uh, best and diseases, and all these produ production problems are impacting their diet. Eh? Initial assessments found that close to 30% of food consumed on Ureparapara is imported. 
to promote healthier alternatives as well as income generation opportunities, the project incorporates an integrated farming approach that encompasses agroforestry, crop and livestock diversity, planting material supply, as well as pest and disease monitoring and prevention. Food security is important. With the climate change issue now and cyclones coming at wrong times of the year, as we say here locally, they are now beginning to realize that it is important that they are, you know, they are resilient, that they have food security, they can look after themselves, especially when they are more isolated than other people in the other islands. One demonstration farm here, setting up here in Sola, with one um, big nursery, it's a nursery here. Uh, in the nursery we've got um, we cross here seedlings and give the seed germinate the seedlings and give them out to any interested farmers to grow their own seedlings. Parapara, we've also had a big nursery there set up. Um, we do all the same thing, germinate the seeds of uh, forestry and uh, vegetables and whatever we can grow them there and give them off to um, the farmers around. The seeds is not an uh, easy thing for us to um, obtain here in uh, this province, but we at one time we grow vegetables, seedlings, as Chinese cabbage and cucumber, whatever we got from the vegetable uh, seeds program from the government and the SPC brought in some, so we terminate them over there. And community people, have see, some of them have seen that uh, kind of uh, gardening for the first time, growing vegetable, and they're happy about it. Agroforestry combines uh, short-term benefits, the medium benefits and the long-term benefits. So out from uh, that, uh, we plant uh, uh, root crops, combining them with the uh, some vegetables and uh, uh, some uh, uh, forestry, so uh, take enough chance to benefit uh, with the uh, root crops while waiting for uh, the timbers to, to be harvested in the long term run. Hudson Mumek has travelled the world, but he left his career on the seas and about four years ago started this agroforestry farm on the outskirts of Sola. Last year we have a uh, shaman, and then for a period of three months, I think, and then some of the yams that I planted, they didn't grow. They all dried up again. I think the crops that sell well over here is um, kumala and um, cassava and pineapple by December. With this SPC project, uh, as, um, I have uh, some fruit trees and cassava and um, some variety of kumala over here. I think um, they are growing well over here. Life on these islands depends as much on the ocean for food security and well-being as it does on the land. With assistance from the project, the Divers Bay community has established a marine protected area to safeguard its precious resources for future generations. While on land, efforts to provide alternative sources of livestock are also taking shape. We like building, building two breeding centers for local chicken, more goats in Lombardia, more one place for distribution for low pig. Yes, lo sola. Lo para para. I got we uh, build them one building centers for duck, more one for goat. Look, look for me. We them all get a building centers. We project with them. We help them move la. You meet for make them. I me left them up all some uh, every day. Diet for people la. All some. The first time when you find them, the protein is small, but with them uh, look look more, with them look at the breeding centers, yeah, but if you look, uh, you miss a little bit more back in, uh, for example, lo balance one balance diet, eh? for all people, lo torba, especially lo para para, lo sale lo protein. 
what we have here is Talsas Talabia project, we choose Talabia to, yeah, to come into Provapta Tapa provinces because the only, the only main problem is that we found out that most people in Sola are not getting out, going out fishing. And most people in Sola, they want to eat fish, but no fish, no fishermen. We had a training to build on the capacity for the farmers, and then they have to continue on to extend it to other farmers to have that. And then the, the tilapia is going to continue on to others to balance type of food that is going on in the community. We've uh, collaborated with uh, TVET in uh, running some of our trainings. Uh, for example, the, the vegetable trainings as well as the aquaculture Delabea fish farming training and the prawns training. So uh, we're fortunate to have uh, TVET working with us to implement uh, our component, our training component of the project. From the inside law family, women have me, one person where have me was over law kakai. More inside law family have me, because them family more all food where inside law family law, law him. For example, in the beginning, I started to plant more vegetables and crops and I started to plant more crops and I started to plant more crops and I started to plant more crops. But the training is where I started to plant more crops and 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 I started to plant more crops. Disaster is that all crops were stopped from the last time. They came quick time. A lot of time when we were planning to finish, time is time to harvest. We were like, they came, we were like, Salem, low one simple price where a street from community from the last time pay. And after that, some of them like Karen, we came to the house from Kakai. Money was. I received my input inside the community, the helping community. I wanted something where the community needed me. I wanted to use my money now. In the short time frame of the project's implementation, households, schools and whole communities are reaping tangible results on the ground. But this success has not been without its fair share of challenges. Transportation is it's a major uh, constraint that uh, help uh, slow down the, the, the activities of the project. The other challenges that we face is the weather conditions. Sometimes it delays the transportation of the materials as well as uh, the, the, the engagement of offices to move from uh, one project site to another. And uh, the third challenges is the communication where it's difficult to communicate with the project officers, uh, where the project sites as well as the community themselves whom we engage in the, in the project. So these are the main uh, three challenges that we faced. Uh, despite of these challenges, we've uh, success to succeed in uh, trying to establish a teleradio to ease away the barriers of the communication. So through the project, the SPC USA project, uh, we have uh, established uh, two radio stations, one at the scallop site in Sola, and the other one is in the Taket site in Uraparapara. The teleradio and other project activities were officially launched in Sola and Ureparapara by Toba's Secretary General and were celebrated with huge fanfare in conjunction with World Food Day in November 2014. I was part of that community for several days and when I spoke with the people there they said this is this is a huge change for us because we're mostly forgotten. Since time one or two we've been current because of independence to 1980 in Okat one project called the island of Ureparapara. I want them where me different slopes here from before we play in handle or some small house no more I mean, I have a command full of copra. So, I mean, the first place we need to thank you for the project where I have 
kimwan ofa lo mifula from pikula dog waste up lo community plumina ya uh, emi lo just lo last week mifula is selling about 60 ton 60 ton we copra dog ya emi accommodate them but with them time before he no been cut one pikula dog all same mifula just leave him all copra plumi mifula lo small house no more pay me no na all same mi talent finish lo last week no more one ship has been carried out 60 tons, but it's not finished. It's not half the price of it. So now yeah, it's one ship has been out of the look and feel. It's not come to the semi-fill up again from all half the price of it. So next one, I'll please tell me, I want to mention him, I'll uh, uh, talk thank you, we call all dry away stuff. From since before it's not been cut. It's not been cut. I'll please tell you, you all private pet no more. Lo one one man, but it's taken a long time to us. So now I got full of picking in the early out and come to school. I feel like they will pay my school fee. I feel like I have a big chance now. From 10 dry away stuff, I'm easy to make them. I feel like I have a big chance to make them. I feel like I have a big chance to make them. I feel like I have a big chance to make them. While efforts have focused on Torba province, they are being realized in other parts of the country as well. On the island of Espiritu Santo, in Sanma province, work has begun to establish a livestock breeding center for pigs. The US SPC project is, I think, as we're building up a piggery project, and which is one of the first pig project that is run within the country. That is on, uh, hopefully, will be owned by the government. Every time that we go and uh, conduct the courses and workshops, farmers asking us where will we get a stock. And thanks to SPC that comes in and we are breeding up, we are uh, setting up. Whatever comes up, like the offspring of those breeding stock will be sending out to the solar. And also having the breeding, uh, send, big breeding center here will also look after the three provinces. Solar, I will priority solar, and after that we'll be looking at Penama and Sanma. Hands-on community involvement and commitment is playing a crucial role in the success and sustainability of the project's objectives and achievements so far. And so too the partnership and support of the national government and other stakeholders. At the request of the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of Climate Change, the SBC USAID project and SBC GIZ are co-implementing an innovative education awareness program called the Vanuatu Climate Zone Quiz. And the two programs uh, collaborated, first of all, to design a series of questions. A lot of those questions came from the work of the SPC USAID program in the field, from the SPC GIZ program in the field. A lot of questions came from uh, impacts uh, that we've experienced recently in Vanuatu, cyclone impacts, etc. Uh, and the students then were able to demonstrate their local knowledge uh, about how to respond and cope with climate change and disaster. So that the winners of this program were given a uh, technical and financial uh, prize to go out then and implement climate change adaptation uh, in their sphere. So it was about not just knowledge and sharing knowledge, but then using that knowledge to do real practical adaptation. The people of Toba have for generations coped with the changes around them and have proven themselves resilient time and time again in the face of disaster. By sharing knowledge, providing the tools necessary for increased availability and stability of food sources, and through partnership, those who call these idyllic shores home are further empowered to continue to adapt to climate change. And the nation as a whole is one step closer to achieving its vision of a healthy, wealthy Vanuatu. <laughs>